Hello everybody, welcome back from spring break. I hope you had a good time, and I hope that you're ready for the first lesson of math for the fourth nine weeks. After this, you're going to be in high school. So let's make sure that you can solve some equations before you do the real things in high school. Before we get started, I just want to show you what the end goal of what an eighth grader is supposed to be able to do. And by the end of this week of reviewing, this should be no problem for you. To be able to solve a word problem involving somebody buying things, working every hour, delivery fees, 14 hours. By the end of this week, this should be completely doable for you. Maybe right now this would be difficult, maybe right now this wouldn't be. If you can already start thinking of a way of how you would answer this question, then good for you. This week's going to be real easy for you. If this is difficult for you, just make sure you're paying attention in these videos that we're going to be having every day and ask your teacher questions. Let's get started with this first equation. We have v minus 9 equals 14. Okay, the first thing we want to do if we're going to solve this equation is we need to know what we're going to solve it for. We're not solving it for 9, we're not going to solve for 14, we are always going to solve for the letter. Well, pretty much always, as far as you know, always. We're going to put a box around the letter so that way I know that's what I'm trying to solve for. If this thing is solved for, then that means that in the end, I should have something where it's v equal to a number. And our goal of solving an equation is to find out what needs to go here so that if I subtract 9, I get the answer of 14. And how we solve for that letter, for that missing number, is we use inverse operations. But I don't like using the word inverse operations. I like to just think I'm going to undo whatever I see. So right now I have the letter V. And what's happening to it is it's being subtracted by 9. This says v minus 9. What's that 9 doing? It's subtracting. So how you get rid of that minus 9 is you do the opposite of it. We are going to add 9 to both sides. We have to, keep, we have to add the 9 to both sides because we have to keep it equal. If you only did it on one side, then it would be unequal. When we add this 9 to the left side, it's only going to affect the other 9. This 9 won't change the v because this is a letter and not a number. So whenever we add 9 to the left, it's only going to change the other number on the left. We have a negative 9 and we have a plus 9. Negative 9 plus 9 combines to make 0. And then we're going to copy down whatever is left over. On the right side, we're going to have a 14 plus 9, and that's going to make 23. And on the left side, we didn't touch that v. That v did not change. So I have v plus 0 equals 23. We can simplify this just by removing that 0 to say v equals 23. And this matches my goal that I made at the start. So to solve this question, all we had to do was do the opposite of what was happening to v. Okay, so we're pretty much done with this question. We have one more thing we need to do, and that's we're going to check our answer. When you check your answer, that means you're going to take this number, and this number, 23, is equal to v. We're going to check our answer by taking this number, 23, and we're going to put it everywhere that we put a box at the start. We only have one box in this question, so instead of writing the letter v, we're going to put the number 23. 23 minus 9 equals 14. If this, thing, if this thing subtracts to make 14, then we got this right. So let me just get my calculator. 23 minus 9 makes 14. And 14 is equal to 14. So this is true. You can put a little check mark to say, I checked it. OK, let's move on to another example. In this example, we have negative 16 minus negative t equals negative 45. A lot of students have trouble with negative signs, but it's really easy as long as you do it step by step, one little piece at a time. So that one little piece we're going to start off with is we're going to check and see if we have two negatives next to each other. We do. Since we have two negatives next to each other, I'm just going to simplify this before I start on anything. Two negative signs combine to make a plus sign when they're side by side. So the question we're actually going to be answering is negative 16 plus t equals negative 45. The only thing we changed was we combined two negative signs to make a positive sign. Then we start off with our first step, which is to box the variable. 
that's their variable, that's what we're going to be solving for. So that means in the end, this is my goal. My goal is to have the t by itself. This t has something happening to it. The t is positive, but this 16 is negative. That's a negative 16. We need to get rid of that negative 16 because we want t by itself. We need this thing that's next to t to disappear. So what will be the opposite of subtracting 16? Adding 16. Because we see that this 16 is negative, the only way we get rid of it is by adding a 16 to it. And if we add 16 there, we're going to add 16 here. Negative 16 plus 16 makes 0 plus t equal to. This is also a place where a lot of students make mistakes. Look at these two things. These two numbers have different signs. When numbers have different signs, they're not working together, or they're working against each other. So this negative 45 is not going to become larger, it's going to become closer to zero. Negative 45 plus 16 will become a negative 29. Negative 45 plus 16 is a negative 29. Then all we have to do is, since this is just zero plus t, it doesn't even matter. So you could rewrite this, t equals, and I already have that part, so let me just forget about that, t equals negative 29, and we're done. But to make sure that we're actually done, we need to check it now. We're going to check to see if this is the right answer by taking this negative 29, which we said is equal to t, and we're going to put it where t was at the start negative 16 plus, instead of writing t, we're going to put the negative 29 equals negative 45. We're going to make sure that this left side is equal to the right side. So in your calculator, do negative 16 plus negative 29. That makes a negative 45 on the left, and that is equal to negative 45, which we wanted from the original question, so that's right. I could show you another one-step equation, but this video is going to get too long if I do that, so let's just move on to the two steps now. The two-step equations are the equations that are actually on the seventh grade level. Since y'all are eighth graders, you should have some sort of memory of doing this before. If you don't, let's get it this time, okay? We start the two-step equations the same exact way. We're going to put a box around the letter. That's the N. That's what we're going to be solving for. There are no other letters over here. So we only have to worry about this one. In the end, we're going to want n by itself equal to something else. So if we want n by itself, we need to get rid of this 16, and we need to get rid of this 7. Once you're pretty good at this, it won't matter which one of these you get rid of first. But let me just tell you, as a math teacher, as somebody who's done math, thousands of problems, tens of thousands of problems probably in my life, the easiest way to solve for a variable is you get rid of the things that are farthest away from the letter first. This 16 is farthest away from n, so we're going to get rid of this 16. What kind of 16 is it? It's a plus 16. We get rid of a plus 16 by doing the opposite of it, which is a minus 16 on both sides. A plus 16 and a minus 16 are going to make 0, and then we're going to copy this part with the 7n because we didn't change it. We're going to copy the equal sign and then we have to figure out 8 minus 16, and that's negative 8. Okay, so this is our new equation that we have to solve now. We just did one step, and this is called a two-step, so that means we only have to do one more thing. Since we're adding 0, I don't really need to have that. I'm just going to save myself some space. Negative 8 is equal to 7n. This, let's just read it one more time. Negative 8 is equal to 7n. And do you know what, me what it means whenever you have a number touching a letter? When that number touches that letter, it means that they are multiplying. Whenever you have a little dot in between two things, that means that they're multiplying. Whenever you don't have anything between these two things, that also means that they're multiplying because they're touching. This is 7 times n. What would be the opposite of doing 7 times n? The opposite of multiplying is dividing. 
And the easiest way to divide when we're doing equations is with a fraction bar. So get comfortable with fractions. If I divide by 7 on the right side, on the other side of this equal sign, I also need to divide everything by 7. 7 divided by 7 means how many times does 7 fit into 7? 7 fits into itself one time. So it reduces to just be the number 1. That's 1n is equal to negative 8 divided by 7. If you were allowed to leave this as a fraction, this would be your answer. But if they asked you to do it to a decimal, then let's just put that in the calculator. Negative 8 divided by 7. If your calculator is like mine, then the divided by button might just be a slash. So the number I got for that was that n is equal to, writing that 1, you could put it if you want, but it's also not required because if you just put the letter n, how many n's are right there? It's just one n. So you don't have to put the number 1. You can just put the letter. Negative 1.14285743. But let's just round to the hundredths place. When we round to the hundredths place, you look at the third decimal. And at that third decimal, which right here is a 2, if that number was 5 or higher, then we would have to round that number 4 up. But since that third number is a 2, we're going to keep it where it is, and that's going to stay negative 1.14. And this is our answer. But we're supposed to check it, so let's check it. We're going to take negative 1.14, and we're going to put it for n. 8 equals 16 plus 7 times negative 1.14. So this is another way that you can see multiplication is if you put something in a parentheses next to a number, that means multiplication. So let's just check in our calculators. 16 plus 7 parentheses, negative 1.14, close the parentheses, and we get 8.02, and on the left side we had 8. Okay, so these two things aren't exactly equal, but that's because we rounded it right here. If we didn't round it, and if instead we used that fraction, then these two things would say exactly the same thing But because we rounded, we got two things that are approximately the same. So whenever you round, you're going to get about the same answer, but it won't be exactly the same answer. So that's just something to think about whenever you have to do rounding. I'll do two more questions in the next video. And they're both going to be different forms that have fractions.